I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the one, the only, super millennial, David Barreto. Big Dave. Friday, Dave. It's Friday. What are we celebrating? Are we? I don't know. We got to do something, right? You know, I need a vacation. What was it like to be on vacation? You enjoy it? It was nice to work in a different place. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that. Like, like as weird as it sounds, you know, I worked. I enjoyed my time. But working in a different scenery felt great. Just being somewhere else was nice. I could see that. I really could. So this week, our topic was perception and on mondays with the super millennial david did a show on the millennial perception in health huddles we talked on the energy of transformation on wednesday's meeting of the minds we had part two of the self-made woman peggy romero interview on connection thursday we talked about stepping out of the door of the comfort zone cage and today we have a book study from the best-selling author, Mark Middlestead, The Alchemy of Purpose. Congratulations to Mark. As of this recording, he's hit number one Amazon bestseller in two different categories, and it's just beginning. It's just starting. And I couldn't be more proud of Mark. Mark had worked very hard on all this. I know behind the scenes how much time him and his wife Dawn put into this book. And I want to say it was an amazing launch. You know, he had hit number one before we ever launched our stuff, David. Yeah, I, I saw that when I got the text message. I was still writing um, the email to let everybody know. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty awesome. And the thing, the thing I was thinking about when I was writing it, right, is that the amount of work, the time, the effort, the yeah. sacrifices, all the stuff that goes into it, it was for us. You know, mm -hmm. it's for the people who needed to hear that and make a shift. And like I said, if we're here to make a shift in the planet, he is doing his part. Yep. And I think it's incredible. Yep. So um, I put my review in and I know that they haven't posted any reviews yet because when you put a review in Amazon, it does have to be approved. Right. So we don't have any reviews to read here yet today. Yeah, no. So next week we will um, we'll definitely, you know, put the reviews out. So keep going. And the book is free. The ebook is free for the next three, three days. days. So it'll be two days. Thursday, uh, as you, Friday, as you're yes. listening to it now, and Saturday. So, man, have you, got, have you, you guys can't lose on that. And, and I'm telling you, you guys, well, anybody who's listening to the podcast, you're getting a book because you've been listening to the book. We know you're getting a book. And so we're very excited, very, very excited for Mark. You know, that's something that can never take away from you when you when you do that. And he's earned it. And it's going to, I think it's just the beginning for him. Oh, yeah, for sure. So well, let's get into it, my friend. We're in chapter 19, and you're going to be shocked at how these chapters match and completely match what we talked about this week. And no, I didn't plan it that way. It just happened. <laughs> okay, so let's open up. Chapter 19 is the company we keep. We all seek a connection with others. We need it in order to express love. The relationship is established. Our, the, the relationships we establish are extremely important to our well-being and none more so than the relationship we have with our own self. We are taught to put others first. As a noble as that is, it often results in everyone getting shortchanged. When we keep giving away our time, energy, and love to others without investing in ourselves, eventually there will be a little left uh, left of ourself to give. This isn't to say that we should never put the needs of another above our own, but we must be aware of our own energy level when we are around others. We've all felt immediate and strong sensation of energy. We, human, we humans vibrate with and emanate. Walk into any funeral and it can feel like a black hole, a deep void, a vacuum of energy being sucked out, leaving all in a very low energy. 
That is to be expected. On the other hand, when walking into a wedding or a birthday celebration, we can feel positive vibration of the energy from everyone. This energy exists always in all of us. The positive and negative energy flow of life. But life isn't always weddings and funerals. And in most circumstances, we will sense such obvious energetic extremes. In fact, it is easy to go through much of our life recognizing no energy whatsoever. And this is what most will do. We all have this instinct or gut feeling about people and situations. This is a reaction to the energy level being put out there for us to feel. But we tend to not follow our feeling about this energy and instead attempt to make a logical decisions based on the ego's programming. So let's talk about that a little bit, David. So when we're talking about energy levels, we call it in Stress Mastery your predominant energy. And our predominant energy is actually set. That's the energy you kind of live in. That's your predominant energy. And it's set by the programs that you carry within the subconscious mind. Whatever domination of programs that you carry will be your energy. Some people carry very low programming and their energy will come off as a victim. Some carry higher negative energy, they come off as angry. Some carry a lot of fearful programs and they'll come off as anxious. You understand? Yeah, there's people that you, and everybody knows at least one or one or the other of these people, the people who you just kind of want to be around and you can't explain it, you know, very happy, yes. nice feel. Then there's some people where you're like, oh. They repel you. They just, you feel it, you know. Yes, you feel it. So he continues. People can be very charming in their appearance, saying and doing all the seemingly right things that draw us to them. People can also put us off by their words and actions. These are the superficial qualities our, qualities our logical ego mind perceives. But deep down, we will often have a feeling about others without logical thought. This case or this ease or unease is either a vibrational match or disturbance in our field of energy. This does not mean that there is anything right or wrong with that person. It only means we feel comfortable or uncomfortable around them in a given situation. Under a different set of circumstances, you might not feel the same way about the person. Again, this isn't a judgment of him or her, but a reaction to their energy in the moment. We should be aware and mindful of this energy, for it will serve us well and often better than the logical mind. The people we choose to surround ourselves with are mostly chosen for logical, ego-driven reasons. We have things in common with them, such as with our friends, or we feel obligation to be with them as with our family members, or we must cooperate with them as with co-workers. There are perfectly legitimate and even healthy reasons for allowing certain people into our lives, none of which has to do with their energy. And so, what, you want to talk on that a little bit? Yeah, I, th- I think we, we discredit a lot of that and we just call it personality type. Right. I think we say that and we excuse it, you know, make an excuse for it all the time. And we sometimes think it's a, we, we do it a lot of times with like health, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm always motivated. But then when you look at like the blood work, we can tell that you're, it's a personality type is the reason why you're motivated because your body is crashing on you. It's the same thing with the energy. And so what he said in here, he goes that the people we choose to surround ourselves with are mostly chosen for logical ego driven reasons. Mm -hmm. And he's right, because many of the times we're actually don't choose. Yeah. You know, we attract certain people in or we have our group that we stay in our group. We stay in our tribe. Yeah. You know, and this can happen in family. This can happen in friends. It happens at work. Right. We stay in our group. We have our certain groupings. So he continues. In fact, we seldom pay attention to the energy of the people around us. We will notice the obvious, such as those who make us feel very strong emotions, either good or bad. We will love being around those who make us smile or laugh or despise being around people who frustrate or anger us. Most, however, fall into the energetic soup we encounter every day and largely ignore, at least on a conscious level. Whether we realize it or not, we, whether I'm having trouble, uh, I'm tongue tied today. 
It's been a busy day, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whether we realize it or not, the energy of others affects us and depending on our awareness or lack thereof may even affect our perspective and life choices as well. In order to build conscious awareness of the energy of others, we must first become more in tune with our own energy. We are of little to no use in helping anyone, including ourselves, when we are in a low energy state of being. In those moments, we need to turn our attention inward and work on raising our own energy, not wasting what little we have on others. We often call this recharging. Have you ever felt energetically depleted but kept on giving to others out of obligation or a need to be accepted? Have you then reacted from this depleted energy state which manifested outwardly as frustration, anger, etc.? If you had instead taken a step back and gave yourself a little time to recharge, the result probably would have been very different. Again, it all comes down to the relationship we have with ourselves. We need to learn how to love ourselves just as we are. We need to learn how to raise and maintain our energy level through self-care in all the six elements of life. When we, love all, when we love all aspects of ourselves, we cease being judgmental of others because we no longer need to seek validation in them. When we have high positive energy within, we exude or emulate positive energy towards others, thus attract more people who do the same. They will be naturally drawn to us because we will be living our purpose. This is when we most need to be aware of our energy, for in addition to the high energy people, we will also attract those living in lower energy. Some we can assist and guide towards higher energies. Others, however, are needy and that they must feed off our, off the energy of others to recharge themselves because they cannot do so on their own. Some call these people energy vampires, but I don't like to think of them in this manner. They are just lost souls trying to find their own purpose, but have no one to guide them in a positive way. These are people who think mostly negative thoughts, live with faulty beliefs, and complain about life, but make no attempt to change it. It's not because they won't, it's because they don't know how and so will remain stuck in low energy. Being aware of, your, of our own energy is invaluable here. If we are to truly live our purpose, expressing love. So I'm an empath, so I feel all kinds of energy. I feel everything. And so for me, I've had to create boundaries and I've created practices to make sure I keep my energy up because people will come to me and because I bring their energy up. They will do that all the time to me. So I've learned like when I'm done coaching, I have to have a break. You know, I walk right by, I wouldn't talk. I have to go reset. I have to go recharge as he call as he called it, right? Yeah, as he talks about this, it, it, it reminds me and, and some people kind of, at first I, I had somebody say it was rude at one of our talks. Yes. Because you disappear. I disappear every time. And people want to ask questions yep. and come up and stuff like that. Yep. And, you recharge every single time, every time you've done it. And I usually stay there. And I, by the end of it, am so drained, right? Is and it? you're doing more than you recharging. And that's the thing, like when they were like, oh, yes. well, you could come off rude or the outcomes could be different because our outcomes are very different. I had to learn to stop to recharge. Because what, so what David's talking about, a lot of times when we lecture, they may be three hour lectures. And we always like, we will talk 50 minutes, take off 10 and I'll disappear because I have to recharge for the next part of the talk. Mm -hmm. And I always come out at the end, but people that really look at that like, wow, well, he's stuck up or he's this. If you don't protect your energy, mm -hmm. then what happens is you cannot be the light. You can't give to others if you're depleted. And that's what Mark's talking about here. You have to learn how to recharge yourself, but you can't recharge yourself if you don't know where your energy is. If you think that low energy is normal, that you're supposed to wake up tired every morning because it's normal, and you're supposed to get tired at work because it's normal, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> but that you you have you have no awareness of energy. Does that make sense? Yeah, like I said, for me, that was the thing. I, I remember the first few events we did, I was nonstop. It's like, Bill's not here, I got it, you know? And at the end, 
as bad as it sounds, I didn't want to deal with people. And I want to deal with people. It's just if you don't stop, yes. it's just draining. Like you said, the outcomes could be extremely different if you're not aware of it and you don't do something about it. And so I think it's I think that's important. Mark continues here. We could be of help to those who are lost so long as we are living in the higher levels of purpose. It is difficult to help those in the material level if we too reside there. This is where the entire idea of misery loves company comes from. People living in low energy who cannot raise their own energy wish to be in a sympathetic company of others who also cannot raise their energy. Instead of being lifted to higher states of energy, they all wallow in their low energy together. They are simply unaware and nothing more. If we are living in a higher state of energy, we can aid them, but only if they are willing to make the commitment to change. We can be one of those who live in low energy but wish to change. We may also have some aspects of our being that vibrate in low energy, even while other aspects are in high energy. This is the internal conflict we deal with. Those living in low energy are there because they avoid conflict rather than embracing and resolving it. Growth and raising our energy requires conflict and resolution. Avoiding conflict always keeps us in low energy. So what Mark is talking about, we talked about that this week. It's going out of stage three to stage four. The things that are lower in their energy are the programs being activated. And that is conflict. And the only way you can resolve conflict is to deal with the conflict. That's what he's talking about. The programs activated and releasing them. Because every time you release a low program of low energy, you automatically raise your natural state. So you have higher energy. Nobody needs to live in low energy. That's a myth. That's a myth that some people are energetic and some people aren't. That's a myth. It's all programming. Yeah. Make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add? No. So he continues, Mark continues. The energy we put out there is always going to draw people who are either emanating the same energy or those who are in need of the same energy. When two or more people living in high energy are in each other's field of energy, their combined energy is raised. When two or more people living in low energy are in each other's field of energy, their combined energy is lowered. When one in high energy is in the field of one in lower energy, the high energy is lowered and the lower energy is lifted to create balance. Energy always lives in balance. It's the natural harmony of the universe. This is important to be aware of when it comes to the company we keep. Those who work in helping professions, nurses, doctors, police officers, EMT, therapists, coaches, etc., are constantly subjected to people who are in lower energy states. Aside from their colleagues, they almost never see people at their best and often see them at their worst. And when we are continually immersed in low energy, self-care is not a recommendation but a necessity. In fact, lack of self-care is the reason so many of the helping professions burn out or suffer from PTSD and depression. Fact, yeah. right? Okay. So in the clinics, when we, <laughs> we had our clinics, right? The people coming in were not jolly and happy. In fact, those with chronic issues had an identity of illness. That's to the point where you'd almost avoid them when they walked into clinics. Remember? Yeah. It's funny because there's a lot of these grumpy patients that used to come in. And I was like, I'll meet you in a month because this isn't you. This is you yep. dealing with what you're dealing with. Now, here what was interesting. So in our clinics, we had the wellness and the medical side. They were separated. Mm -hmm. And so the wellness side was all upbeat. The medical side was medicine. You know, it's, yeah. people are sick, right? They don't feel well. And so it was interesting how the staffs would kind of intermingle. Everybody would be over in our section. Yeah. You ever notice that? They would always come over to, hey, what are you guys doing? We always come over in our section. So why? Was there, you know, Just because millennial. David was there. That's why. But you see what he's saying, why they did that. Mm -hmm. That's why. Because they were coming over there because they needed to feel a higher energy. It was interesting because... The way the clinic, the one clinic was built, they're all, they're all built differently, but the one clinic was built where you had the wellness and then you had the reception and then it went medical. So it was like a buffer between the two mm -hmm. and you could literally feel the difference in energy. So, yeah. so Mark continues, no matter what we do for a living, we all need self-care physically, mentally, and energetically. 
If we become aware of our own energy, we will begin to notice the energy of others and protect ourselves from those living in lower energetic states. Look at the company we keep, be it our family, friends, co-workers, and everyone we come into contact with. How is our energy when we are around them? It's a good question, people. Really look, feel, be aware. Mark continues, if we are aware and mindful, we will begin seeing who in our life facilitates our expression of our purpose and who holds us back from expressing it. So, you see, personal growth is really energy work. When we are living in purpose and expressing it out of love, we are emulating the highest levels of energy. On the material level of purpose, we hold tightly onto our energy and thus remain trapped in our false beliefs that this is just how life is. Those on the enlightened level of purpose no longer hold energy for they realize we are but a, we, we are but a conduit for the energy of the universe and allow it to flow through them in an endless supply of love. This is our universal purpose and, and the level we need to seek. So it's interesting, you know, that ends that chapter. It's interesting how he says that because the, the energies that we talk about and, and, and the people that we're around, personal development, the, and I say this all the time, the level of one's personal development or personal growth will determine the level of your success. Remember, my definition of success is peace. So if you want your life to change and you don't work on yourself to change your energy, everything is the law of mind. So what you feel, you attract. Where do you think your feelings are coming from? The programs that you're carrying. Your feelings are your state, your energy that you're in. If you're not working on yourself every single day, there is no way you can rise to your ultimate potential. You agree with that statement? Yeah, I think that's why people are living it on a day to day. It's just they don't know or they're oblivious. Like he said, energy is only apparent when you, when you notice energy. If you don't notice it, you're just going through a normal day. And that means if your normal day doesn't give you the life that makes you want to wake up in the morning and jump out of bed, it's because yeah. you're hanging around people that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You got to get uncomfortable because when you start hanging around higher energy people, they're going to make you uncomfortable. And you think, oh, won't they make me feel better? No, they're going to make you look at your life and say, I need to do something. Yeah. Makes Take sense? Yep. Right? So the next chapter 20 is called Commitment. It starts with a quote. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Lao Tzu. The gist of this very famous quote above is that even the most overwhelming task can be tackled if we have the strength and the will to begin. While I deeply revere this great Chinese philosopher and the founder of Taoism, I take a slightly different view of the of the thousand mile journey. I contend that the most difficult part of changing one's life is not taking the first step. It's not giving up before we take the last one. This requires commitment. Our whole week was on that, yeah. right? Yeah. What was what was the episode? You rolled down the hill. I don't remember which episode it was, but we talked about stepping out of the door of the comfort zone cage. And when you step out of the door of stage three into stage four, you don't step in out of the door. You don't have a linear path. It's a mountain you got to <laughs> climb, right? So you basically got to understand that. And that's what he's talking about. So let's get let's go on. Mark continues. Let's say, for example, that reading this book is the first step in your journey. While everything discussed so far is important to consider, they are in fact only concepts and embracing them conceptually is not going to change your life much. Of course, thinking in a more spiritually and or positive way will benefit you. How can it not? The more effort we put into thinking positively, the more positive life becomes. However, in order to create the life you desire, you will not only have to understand these concepts, but begin applying them to your thoughts, beliefs, intentions, and actions. Lasting change comes from daily ritualistic habits that become routines. These routines become our new lifestyle. This takes a lot of work and a lot of time. It took our entire life to get where we are right now, and it's going to take a serious commitment to shifting those underlying thoughts and beliefs and resolve conflict and create something new. No matter how much effort we put into creating our life, we will inevitably experience some failures along the way. But the failures don't, 
mean it's not working. In fact, they are gifts and opportunities to see what we are doing wrong so we can then adjust and make corrections to our way of thinking or acting. In this way, failures can be viewed as internal conflict. We can learn and grow by resolving them, eventually turning them into success. This is where commitment comes into play. Success, on the other hand, can actually cause us to stop growing. This is hugely important, people. Before you slam, this is his next sentence, Mark continues. Before you slam the book shut, just hear me out. I am not knocking success. Success is wonderful. That said, it simply does not provide the types of opportunities for growth that failure does. What, what do I mean by this? We often set goals and do what, we knew, do what we need to in order to achieve them, only then to fall back in old habits again because we have not done the underlying spiritual work needed to create sustainable change. The most common example is weight loss. We set a goal to lose a certain number of pounds or inches or to reach a certain weight. We choose from the plethora of nutritional and exercise plans out there, and over time we meet our goal, success. But what typically happens? Life moves on, we eventually stop thinking so much about our diet and exercise regimen, and the number on the scale begins to creep back up. This is because we are focused on that one thing, the goal weight, rather than the process of expressing love to ourselves through a healthy lifestyle. Do you see now how success can trip us up? In order to truly create what we want, we need to change how we think about change itself. We aren't trying to change ourselves until we reach a goal. This is what we call out, you know, um, goals that are outside ourselves, right? They know what we're going to do. That's why identity-based goals, outcome-based goals never work, people. They don't work because you haven't changed who you are. That's inside you, the identity. So we talked about it yesterday. When you hit that six-month testing period, it's always the imposter syndrome. And then what do people tell you in the weight loss? Do you remember when you were coaching people in the clinics? What happens at the six month? What do they want to do? They've reached their goals. I what do they it. want to do? I got They're on their own. Going to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> it's over with. What would they say that? That's what Mark is saying here. So Mark continues. Commitment is the promise we make to not give up on ourselves. We make commitments to others. They let us know when we have not fulfilled them. They hold us accountable. Promises to ourselves are much easier to break. It's like cheating in solitaire. Only we will know. Promises to ourselves are also easier to justify breaking. We've been programmed to think it's much worse to cheat others than it is to cheat ourselves. Again, it all stems from, stems from the lack of self-love. Once we make the decision to love ourselves, no matter what, Sustainable change will come easier to us. We will hold ourselves accountable. This is integrity, people. When we talk about head, heart, and hand, it's connecting that for integrity of the hand, action, doing what you say you're going to do. Another reason we lack commitment is that we often take our own lives for granted, thinking we always have tomorrow or the rest of our lives to do our personal growth work. This is procrastination, pure and simple. As someone once said, it isn't that you can't, it's that you won't. If we are unhappy with any aspect of our life, isn't the, the very reason for our unhappiness that we've spent our entire life putting it off? If we don't make the commitment now, when will we? Personal growth takes time alone. Yet, we seldom take this time for ourselves. We have been programmed to consider this selfish. And because we've all learned that to be selfish is bad, we tell ourselves we will do this sacred work after we've finished our obligations to others. On rare occasions, we do think of ourselves first. We find that others are disappointed or angry. That's it, guilt. That's yeah, the that second testing period, that. right? The 12-week testing period. All this, see how it matches with yesterday's episode? It's to like, a tea, yeah. the, to a T. They try to make us feel guilty depending upon what level of purpose we're on. We accept that guilt and put our own needs back on the shelf to be revisited later. In the meantime, our precious life is slipping away day by day, moment by moment. Commitment to personal growth is necessary to our purpose. Are we really giving all that we can to others when we aren't at our best? As mentioned earlier, when we, do, when we don't take the time to be our best, we are only shortchanging ourselves, but those we care about. We deserve better than that, and so do they. 
We need to look at ourselves as the most important person in our life. We should, as mentioned in the evaluation section, put ourselves at top of the list of those we love. Pause. This is why you should get the book. Yes, right? <laughs> this is a, yes. When we create the life we want, we become happier, more content, and fulfilled. When we see that our life has purpose, our life improves, as do the lives of those around us, it's a win-win. But it takes a shift in our perspective as to how we see ourselves, how much we love ourselves, and how willing and committed we are to being selfish, how much we dare to be great. And it ends that chapter pretty much right on time, buddy. Yeah, I was going to say, that was a... Go, but it, matched, lately. it matched everything we talked about this week. And your thoughts on that last chapter? Um, I think the more that people start to create that awareness, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's awareness. It's not just overall awareness. It's awareness for each of the categories. It's awareness for yourself, awareness for people. Um, you start to see things in a different light. And like you said, you just, it's not going by day by day. You start to see different energy. That's the thing. Like when we read this, I feel his energy from the book. Yes, it's actually, it's that, very that's very caring. Good. Like yep. he, like. He cares. We hear this from 102 different people. Right. The message is different and you feel that he cares for you. And that's the same thing with the people on your, I mean, on a day-to-day basis. You'll see who's there when they right. need help, when they need you or they need something. Like if you had a, a stand that was giving away stuff and a stand that was asking for things, that one that was asking would not be there. Why do you allow you to be that? Exactly. You know, he sold thousands of books now. So there's people out there that I know about the book that listen to this show. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you don't have an hour a day to do your Green Focus Power Hour because you're too busy, you got to look at perspective of your life. Without you working on yourself, nothing will ever change. In other words, you will never find that purpose of enlightenment he talks about in peace. And you think about an hour a day, that's seven hours out of 168 hours. And if you can't give seven hours out of 168 hours in a week, well, then you get the life that you deserve. There can't be excuses built around this. This is non-negotiable if you want to grow your life. And if you want to master stress, it is absolutely non-negotiable that you have to to have self-care. You have to take care of you and you have to be the most important person. Agreed. You agree? Anything else? Nope, that's it for me. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. Can you put the Amazon link in for him? It's already there. Already there. So you can get the book if you haven't gotten the book, if you didn't get the emails that we send out. If you're not in the community, for some reason, we missed you. In that, in those show notes, just click on it, go right there, and grab your copy of this book. As always, until next time, stay, stay inspired. inspired.